glad to be here for the launch of Visual Studio 2019. So thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Barry Stahl. I'm a solution architect and developer. I know some of you, but not everyone, certainly. Uh, and uh, you might know me as the person who keeps a list of his favorite physicists and favorite mathematicians and likes to talk about it on Twitter. Uh, so I tweeted this list. Please feel free to uh, tell me on Twitter where I screwed up. You know, what did I get wrong? What did I get right? Um, right now, the person that's on the bubble here is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. We'll see how things work out for him as to whether he comes off this list. Otherwise, I think it's a pretty good list. So we have some logistics to talk about about our event today and this location. And then uh, we'll go into some of the really cool stuff in Visual Studio 2019 and what it can do for us. So first off, uh, the things you're going to need to know. There are three bathrooms nearby, one just out this door towards the front, and two more out that door, one on either side. So it shouldn't be too much trouble to find them, and to, uh, be, it shouldn't be too long a line, especially with uh, the size of the group we have right now. Uh, hopefully you've all seen the Wi-Fi, it's, uh, it's on that board over there. Um, the uh, G events. SSID is the one that we should be using. And, uh, you know, as always, be professional. We do have demos that depend on connectivity. So please don't scream, because otherwise we may not have our demos uh, worked out too well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that it still needs to be said for certain people, but treat everybody with respect. Um, we uh, adhere to the Microsoft Community Code of Conduct which it really, it was really written for online communities, but it applies just as well to in-person communities, and it basically says, treat everybody with the respect they deserve, because they do deserve it. So, enough said about that. We have a very inclusive community, and we're doing well going to keep it that way. All right, so what are we going to do today? At 9.30, we're going to have the trooper, Justin James, who's going to come on to talk about what Visual Studio 2019 can do for us to help us write beautiful code faster. Uh, Justin uh, was quite ill last night, and uh, he's going to be joining us by uh, live stream today. Uh, a good decision on his, on his part, because I really don't want to get sick. So thank you for that, Justin. Uh, he's over there listening to us right now, hopefully, on the, uh, on the live stream there, and we'll put him up on the big board at 9.30. Uh, after that, we're going to take a little break, and I'm calling this the Texture Community Break. And this is where we get to make our community here somewhat bigger, because you go and text everybody. You'll have already seen Justin's demos. You'll already have seen some of the uh, cool demos that we're going to do today. And you'll be able to tell the rest of the larger community that they need to get here for after lunch to be a part of this. So, uh, we'll take a break from 10.30 to 10.45. And then we'll be back for Rob. He's going to talk about the future going forward, C Sharp 8 and .NET Core 3, uh, both of which I believe we expect to be released around, or a uh, release date announced around the around the Enter build, build conference next month. After that, we'll go to lunch. Uh, left a little extra time for lunch today. Um, We've got an hour and 15 minutes for lunch. Uh, there are a number of places where you can pick up lunch. Um, there is a restaurant right over here, the Larry. They have lunches there. Um, we have, at, there should be at least one lunch truck coming to the parking lot or that area outside the parking lot. And there's the TG Tap Room and a couple of other restaurants, kind of, at least TG Tap Room's in walking distance. I don't know about the others. Uh, so you're on your own for lunch, but uh, and please be back here by 1 p.m. where assuming everything goes well with our uh, live share demo, with our stream demo today, they'll be back in the afternoon and talk about uh, testing and how to squash bugs and improve your code quality in Visual Studio 2019. Then I'll be back up here to talk about Blazor and Razor, how to build uh, great apps in ASP.NET using Razor and the forthcoming 
laser version that are going to be developed for us. Then we'll take another break in the afternoon and we'll finish the day with Rob back up here talking about taking DevOps to the next level with, uh, with the GitHub and Azure DevOps. And then we'll shoot be out here around 3.30 or so, hopefully you can beat the traffic. I heard there's some weather that's supposed to come in this evening, so maybe we can uh, beat some of that too. So we'll see. All right, so none of this would be possible except for the fact that we have this amazing community here in the Valley of software developers. And I, I love this community. I feel really fortunate to be a part of such a vibrant developer community. And Honestly, it's, it's hard to really explain. I've seen development communities all over the country and in, in a number of places around the world, and we really have a good here. We have a really tremendous community. For one thing, we have our friends here at Galvanize who allow us to do these kind of events. Um, I mean, we're one of only nine places in the world that has Galvanize campus. And being able to do these kind of events here, to be able to be part of the community that's here to develop in this kind of environment or learn in this kind of environment. It's something that's not common and it's kind of special and I really appreciate the fact that they allow us to be part of, of that. Um, we also have a number of fantastic user groups, these monthly events, generally monthly, sometimes not quite monthly, uh, that happen around the valley. And there's a few that I want to highlight. Um, if, for those of you who signed up on the meetup page, you signed up on the uh, Northwest Valley Downtown User Group page. That is uh, for developers, primarily for developers. It's convenient for developers who are in the north and west portions of the valley. That's why I'm here in Glendale. And uh, we uh, meet monthly and talk about uh, topics relating that are interesting to .NET developers. Likewise, in the Southeast Valley, down in Chandler, there's, group, uh, there's a group that meets there called the Southeast Valley Dynamic Vision Group. Often has the same speakers, so it's uh, good for developers in that portion of the valley to, to be part of the community and learn and experience with all of us. If you prefer, I mean, if you feel a little like you're a little above, uh, that topics of a newer nature to .NET, where you feel like you're a little bit newer to .NET and want uh, topics that are more basic or you want to get back to basics, there is the Southeast Valley .NET Newbies group. Uh, and uh, they meet in the same place in Chandler at Gangplank. Gangplank, another facility that is part of the uh, city of Chandler that is a co-working facility. It's an amazing place to have in our community. Um, and so we're very fortunate to have them and these groups that we can be part of and learn from and develop together and be a community. We also have the Phoenix TypeScript group that meets in Tempe there um, at uh, Drive Time. <coughs> so again, some great companies that we're working with, great groups that we can be a part of. Now, if you've been paying attention to the maps here, you might have noticed something. We have this sort of this, you know, axis of awesome, if you will. And uh, I've said uh, this is an alignment, not a collision, because it really is. It's an alignment. But anybody who recognized the movie reference? Just figure it out. Tweet it at me. Use the BS Launch AC hashtag and tweet it at me. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you whether you're right or not. But it really is. It's a, an alignment of, of uh, our group and our, our groups and our community all to the common goal of uh, promoting the developer community here in the Valley. We also have some amazing annual events that I really encourage you to be part of. Uh, many of you know that, that have participated in uh, Arizona Give Camp. If you're not familiar with the Give Camp, it's a community event. Uh, we get together over the course of a long weekend and we code for charities. We put a bunch of developers in a room with a bunch of great local charities, and they code for those charities for the whole weekend. And it is quite an experience. Rob likes to say that sleep is optional, caffeine is provided. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really a, an amazing experience, and I really encourage you to go to uh, meetup.com slash hazygivecamp, sign up so you're notified of future events. We also have 
the always awesome Desert Code Camp. Uh, Code Camp is basically a community conference. So here you have literally hundreds of speakers, some local, some coming in from all over, who simply donate their time to teach what they know to the community and become part of a, a bigger part of that community. Um, so we have a full day multi-track conference here in the Valley that is free for everybody. Uh, I can't encourage you enough. Usually that happens around October or November of every year. Um, so www.desertcocamp.com. Check it out. Sign up on their email distribution and make sure you're a part of it. Our community is broader than that. Uh, we have a very, very diverse community. And that includes not only people, but technologies. So .NET is intended to be a platform for building anything. And it's an inclusive part of our community. So regardless of whether you build for desktop or web, you could be part of this community and .NET and Visual Studio can be a part of your development. Regardless of what platform you work on, what platform you develop for, Visual Studio and .NET can be a part of that. So Xamarin is a tool for building apps that on .NET that can target iOS, Android, Mac OS, TVs, watches, etc. So we have a point of diversity in the community in terms of what our applications can target. We have the ability to develop AI in .NET and Visual Studio. So if you're an AI developer, many of uh, the AI developers in the world right now are, are primarily Python developers. But if you are a .NET developer, or if you are a, an AI developer, you are welcome under our big tent. If you prefer to do your development on a Mac, I see at least one group in the room today. Uh, the, there is Visual Studio for Mac that is available, and you can do all of the same, or most of the same things that you can do in Visual Studio 2019 for Windows on the Mac. Great development tool, probably the best development environment for .NET on the map. And other environments are usable. So we can side-by-side -side install earlier versions of Visual Studio, the current version, the current released version of Visual Studio 2019, which is released now and is available starting in what uh, on the second of this month, I believe as well as the preview channel to see features. And all of those things can exist side by side. So if you have a development team that's still working in Visual Studio 2017, you could have Visual Studio 2017 still running and still working on that side by side on the same machine as Visual Studio 2019 would be the regular version of the preview. So you're not excluding anyone regardless of what your needs are as far as the development environment. And now for the first time, there is feature parity in Visual Studio for the community and professional editions, meaning that the free version of Visual Studio has the same features in it as the paid Visual Studio professional version. The only difference is what you're allowed to, how you're allowed to deploy those, or whether you're allowed to deploy those to an enterprise or not. So if you are a community developer, you're building open source software, or if you're just on your own building software out there, you are part of this community as well. And you have the full capabilities that a professional has, that uh, someone who's building using, using a paid version of Visual Studio has. Finally, we need tools that are gonna help us develop as a community and do the work with None of us is as smart as all of us. I don't think that's actually how the expression goes, but um, we can do, we can develop better when we can develop as a community. So Visual Studio now has tools in it that allow us to use the wisdom of the community. Visual Studio IntelliSense has always been a good aid for development, but now built into it right off the bat is the community's wisdom. There's an AI, portion component of IntelliSense 
that will tell you, based on the circumstances that you're in right now, here's what the things are that the community has done in that circumstance. Here's the methods and properties of this object that you're working with that the community uses in this circumstance. And not only can you get the broader community's perspective, you can get your more local community's perspective because you can train that AI on your code base and have that re represent not only what the community does, but what your development team does as well and how you, your team codes. This is an amazing new feature of Visual Studio and I encourage you to check it out. Lastly, Visual Studio Live Share. This is the, some of you were here beforehand when we were playing with this. Visual Studio Live Share allows you to code with your community in your own environment. So let me just do a demo of this and just show you what I'm talking about. I have here in Visual Studio 2019, I have my blog site. And, uh, you know, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of an old school guy. I always had this just running out in Azure or wherever. And it's just a plain old HTML website. I want to put it in a container now and make this a little more modern so I can do things to scale it. And uh, when I, you know, I don't know much about containers. I'm certainly no expert on using containers, but when I don't know something about web development, well, you know, what do I do? But go to the repository of all web knowledge in the universe. And that, of course, is Rob Richardson. So um, what I would like to show you right now is I'm going, to, I'm going to ask Rob for some help. So I'm going to get on the phone and say, hey, ring, 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 Rob, you there? Hi, I'm Rachel Weston, I'm Rob Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I need some help with this. You know, I'm, I'm not much with the uh, containers right now, but I, I have this website, and I, I want to uh, put it in a Docker container so I can do some magic with uh, deploying it under Kubernetes and all. Um, can you help me out here? I don't really know where to start. Yeah, definitely. Let's get connected with Lasher. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to share it up here, and I'm going to say, you know, you know what, we're already connected, are we? We shouldn't have done that. Yeah, let me leave our previous oh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to sharing. And in the live share session, because it doesn't know it's ended. There we go. So I have the live share button here. And I'm sharing out my environment. So now the invitation link has been copied to my clipboard. I can copy it again if I don't trust that. And I'm going to slide over to Slack here. And I'm going to paste this link in for Rob. That sounds great. I'm going to click on this link, and it will pop up a dialog asking me to connect to Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Are you on that monitor over there, Rob? I am. OK, so you can yeah. kind of see a little bit what Rob is seeing there. So I'm going to choose to live share with VS Code. I've installed the VS Code uh, live share plugin. So Rob is now. So you use Slack to send in the code. So you have to have Slack on this end. Yeah. So we can, you can send that link in anything. You, can, you know, send it in text message, in Slack, in whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But I can read the URL. Yes. And, you know, and so if you saw that, if I tweeted that right now, you guys could actually jump on this session as well if I were to open it up to, for you to do so. Um, I think the key to this though is I'm in Visual Studio right now. Rob is in Visual Studio Code. So he's not even in full Visual Studio, but he has the Visual Studio Live Link, the Live Share plugin installed in Visual Studio Code. And are you seeing my environment right now, Rob? I'm going to click on this. This says, this is Rob Rich. He's on my collaboration session. Huh? So we're up in the upper right hand corner there. I'm going to click on that right now so I can follow Rob. So now, when Rob does things in my code, I'm going to be able to follow that and see what he's doing. Oh, look at that. He's highlighting that section. Did I screw something up there, Rob? So it looks to me like we have a static website here. 
As we're building a Docker file, it looks like we could just use static hosting to pull this off. We don't need a back end like Node or ASP.NET. Let's try and host this in a Docker container that's just using Nginx. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. okay. So I'm going to create a new file here inside www.root, and I'm going to call this Docker file. Oh, I see it right there on the screen. Yeah. Now this is important that this is a called Docker file, not Docker file.txt. So from here, from engine x Alpine, and Alpine is a really small Linux OS. So um, then installing an engine x content on top of it, this will be a really really small container. I'm then going to copy all of the content from this folder into the engine x container, and I'm going to put it right inside this engine x HTML folder, and that's the folder that Nginx is going to share by default. So because we're sharing this folder, then I don't have a sub path within my application. If I just go to my application, then it will launch straight away. And that's all we need for our Docker file. Now this will copy everything into place, and that's probably not what we want to do. We probably want to exclude some things. So I'm going to create another new file. Let's call this .docker-ignore. And this one specifies the ignore paths, the things that we don't want to copy into the container. It follows the same syntax as a git ignore file. So we'll include .git, .vs code. We also don't need our Docker file in that um, file as well. Hey, you know, could I type stuff here too? So if I need to, oh, look at that, I can, you know, so we're actually collaboratively coding here. I could be making changes and you can be making changes. Yeah, it looks like I spelled Docker file incorrectly. You want to fix that for me? Did I spell it? Hmm. What if I undo? Hmm. So this is undoing both what you did and what I did. Yeah. Cool. So we have a shared undo buffer as well. That's kind of cool. Okay, so we've got our Docker ignore file ignoring the things that we don't want to go in our container. We've got the Docker file, our configuration is code specifying how we're going to build our container. Next, let's start to do this. Let's see if we've got the latest Docker image installed. Can you uh, share a terminal? Sure. I'm going to go up to share in here. I'm going to pull down this list, and it says I can share a terminal read only or read write. I'm going to obviously share read write because I need to run the help. Yep. 
So we're not passing screen share data back and forth. We're just passing the contents of the keyboard and mouse, or the keyboard and the contents of the terminal window. So technically, you can right click on the switch and publish. You got a publish file set up. Let's find out. We'll do that. I don't have a publish inside VS Code. I just have the normal um, VS Code items. But yeah, in theory, it's possible. I mean, he was able to add items to my, so he was able to right click on folders and say add item. But I don't think you had, like, you didn't have the ability to install Docker, the, right. what was it, the Docker tooling, yeah. or whatever, so yeah. some things are enabled, some things aren't. Okay. But if he was on VS Studio, I mean, both of them, you could right click and say publish. Not necessarily. Uh, it allows you, it doesn't allow you to do everything. Uh, like, for example, I mean, he couldn't go into my environment and say share a terminal, right? I had to go and do that, go share the terminal. Okay. So are we running? So we've got that Docker container built. I'm going to say Docker, oops, Docker, Docker image list. And we can see there at the very top of the screen, we have that new website container built. You may need to scroll up to see it. Like the first one? Yep. He, he sees it at the top of his screen. I have my slot bigger, so <laughs> the yeah. scrolls. Now let's try running it. Docker run dash P3000 to AD website. So what I've done there by saying 3000 colon 80 is inside the container it will run on port 80. That's where Nginx is running. And we're going to forward port forward port 3000 into that uh, port 80. So from your local machine, hit local host colon 3000 and see if you can pull up the website. That is my problem. That looks great. Why don't you uh, try and hit that right now just to... Can you share the link of the website? Why don't you try to hit me without me sharing? Because the point is, this is now running. This is, this is a website that's running in a Docker container sitting on my machine right there. Right. So if you go to localhost 3000. It's localhost 3000, and I wasn't able to pull up anything. I don't have anything running on localhost 3000. But if I go into sharing again, and I say manage shared servers, see that at the top? Now I get a list of shared servers, and I can add. And what was the port 3000? Now I am sharing port 3000 from my machine. And can you now if you go to that and there? I can, there's your website. So he's connected to a website on my machine through the Visual Studio environment. <laughs> Rob, you have never been so busy as you're going to be. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this worked out really well. I'm <laughs> glad that we could like, do some live share to really get connected and make this happen. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rob. And then we should not forget to disconnect our live share session. <laughs> so let's wrap up here. Ultimately, what it comes down to is we want you to be a part of this community. You're here, so you are, right? Everybody we have. People, uh, we are very lucky to have such an amazing community here in the Valley. So I encourage you all, use what we have. Use the user groups in the Valley. Check on Meetup and look at what's out there. Be a part of that community. Volunteer to speak at the user groups. You can always use speakers at the user groups. If you have a topic that you want to speak on, that you feel like you want to learn, there's, a better, there's no better way to learn than to teach. So if you have a topic that you want to speak about, contact the user group leaders, let them know. Attend the meet, be a part of the community. Go to Desert Code Camp and learn. Go to Arizona uh, and give camp. And be a part and help uh, build the charities. And take advantage of the tools that we have to be a part of this, develop this amazing development community. I thank you. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them as best I can.
while we are setting up.